Hello, I'm Jason Howland, and welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. You know, it's the part of the body that probably gets the most use and abuse on a daily basis. Whether you're standing, walking, or running, your feet are bearing the brunt of your body every day. And there are ways to keep your feet healthier and happier. And here to tell us more is Dr. Jeremy Fleischman. He is a podiatric foot and ankle surgeon from Mayo Clinic Health System. Dr. Fleischman, thanks for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, today we are talking about healthy, happy feet. Let's start out with the basics. First of all, as a podiatric foot and ankle surgeon, the feet are your specialty, correct? Correct. Uh, as a podiatric foot and ankle surgeon, I went to school specifically uh, in dealing with pathology of the foot and the ankle. Uh, I did a very intensive residency program uh, that dealt with elective reconstruction, diabetic limb salvage, and uh, trauma. Um, I've had problems with, I'm, I'm sure you have, and maybe many of the, uh, the people in TV land out there have had problems with their feet. Normally, it's the last thing from your mind, but when you've got aches and pains, it, uh, you're dealing with it every day, every step, and so it's gratifying to be able to help a lot of those people out. So when, it generally, when should someone see a podiatrist like yourself? Well, there's generally a couple different categories of patients. Um, the first one, one of the more prominent ones, is the diabetic population. For many different reasons, diabetics have a lot of different issues with the feet, and the consequences can be very severe. And so it's very important that they have someone closely monitoring their feet on a regular basis. We also tend to see patients that have uh, long-standing problems with their feet. They may have aches and pains that have been going on for months or for years, things like plantar fasciitis, tendonitis, bunions or hammer toes. We also have patients that come in with uh, more of an acute problem. They've got an ankle sprain or they've got an ankle fracture or uh, they drop something on their foot, those sorts of issues. So uh, it's a, a wide spectrum of patients that come in to see us. Well, uh, let's start with uh, just basic foot pain. Do you often see a common cause in basic foot pain cases? Well, there's a, a lot of different reasons why people can have foot pain. Um, one of them would be structure of the foot. There are some people that have very low arches, uh, and there are some people that have very high arches. And depending on which they have, we see that they have a change in the pressure profile on their foot, and that can lead to um, corns and calluses, that can lead to metatarsalgia, that can lead to stress fractures, uh, that sort of thing. We also have, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, patients that come in with trauma. The, uh, the long-standing kind of trauma with tendonitis or with uh, plantar fasciitis, um, degeneration of the joints in the foot that leads to arthritis, uh, or even the acute trauma with sprains or fractures. Oftentimes, we see patients that come in with problems with their shoe gear as well. Um, in school and in residency, we're taught what the good class of shoes is and what the bad class of shoes is. Um, but there are certain patients that are outliers. They don't necessarily follow those, those guidelines. So the generic advice that I give patients is that if you have a pair of shoes that you feel are comfortable and don't cause too much discomfort, they're a good pair of shoes. One set or one classification of shoes that seems to cause a lot of problems is high heel shoes. Um, I know a lot of women like to wear them. And if you're wearing them for long term, uh, or if you're wearing them long term for long periods of time, the foot can start to accommodate and we can see it can cause problems like metatarsalgia, uh, capsulitis, it can exacerbate hammer toes, um, and if patients again are wearing them for long periods of time, they can even cause contracture of some of the muscles at the back of the ankle, which can lead to a, a lot of significant problems. So I guess the lesson for high heels is okay in moderation. Moderation. Right? How, yeah. about, how about uh, in the summer, we often wear a lot of sandals, that kind of thing. Is mm -hmm. that bad for the feet too? It can be. Uh, the reason that it can be is that sandals generally don't have any support around the heel, and so we see that patients are oftentimes grabbing at their shoes with their toes, and that can cause problems like hammer toes, uh, capsulitis, other issues like that. How about orthotics? What are orthotics? Orthotics are devices that we prescribe for patients that can be over-the-counter or prescription that we use to correct any number of problems. Uh, one classification of an orthotic is the kind that we use to reinforce the arch. Uh, we help to realign joints, to control motion, uh, to take tension off of ligaments and tendons. And the other kind, it would be more of an accommodative insert. It's the kind that we routinely give to diabetic patients. Uh, and the goal of it is to essentially bring the ground up to the foot to equalize any of the pressure that's on the foot and try to prevent any calluses and shearing forces, uh, forces excuse me, and wounds. So this is something that slips inside the shoe then? Exactly. The, the, the 
orthotics for the more athletic population are going to be able to move from shoe to shoe, mostly an athletic shoe. Uh, but the diabetic population, they tend to have to get the custom inserts as well as custom shoes. Dr. Fleischman, let's talk again uh, about some of the common foot problems uh, that you see patients for and just talk a little bit about each of those. One of the more common reasons that we see patients in foot and ankle surgery is, is for bunion care. Now, bunions, most people think that those are simply overgrowths of bones. What it actually is is shifting of the bones in the foot. And because of this, the, the most reasonable treatment for this would be surgical intervention. And you can have surgery where patients are allowed to walk on their feet that day. You can have a more aggressive surgery that patients need to be on crutches for about six weeks. And so you kind of have to look at the patient population and see what's most appropriate for them. And, th and this is a protrusion on one or other side of the foot? Is that what Correct. it is? Actually, it can happen on both sides of the foot. Mm -hmm. On the inside of the foot with the first metatarsal, that's just a standard bunion uh, where the big toe starts to drift out towards the lesser toes. On the other side of the foot, it's called a Taylor's bunion. And there's uh, essentially three different reasons or three different categories why patients can develop these. But uh, unless patients are willing to wear big, wide clown shoes, they <laughs> essentially are going to need surgical intervention for that. Some of the other things that we see patients for on a regular basis would be painful hammer toes. And if, again, identifying patients and identifying what's best for them. Usually in the older population, we can get by with comfortable shoes and padding and some splinting. Uh, in the younger population, oftentimes we have to go in and do surgery for that. So what exactly is a hammer toe? Well, a hammer toe, a, a digital deformity, is when the toes are, are not laying straight. Uh, and there are, there are multiple different classifications of hammer toes. And essentially what happens is there are extrinsic muscles that originate in the leg and the tendons go down to the toes. They tend to be a little bit more powerful. And then you also have intrinsic muscles, multiple different categories of muscles in the foot. Uh, and their job is to help to stabilize the metatarsal phalangeal joint and to help to keep toes in, in relative good alignment. It happens a lot in patients with flat feet and in patients with high arched feet. Those muscles in the leg are asked to fire longer and harder than they're supposed to. And because they're much stronger than the muscles within the foot, they overpower them and they cause the toes to buckle. So the, the toes actually are curling then? They can curl. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and it's because your muscles are overcompensating? It's usually just, uh, for simplicity's sake, an imbalance in the muscle pull uh, on both the top and the bottom of the foot. We also see patients on a regular basis for arthritis in the foot. And the most common reason for arthritis in the foot is pain about the big toe. We call that hallux limitus, where that joint gets very stiff and hard to move. Um, and uh, again, comfortable shoes would be the primary choice for that, but many of those patients often require surgery. We see soft tissue masses, we see tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, uh, uh, neuromas, many different things. You know, another disease uh, that podiatry plays a large role in patients' lives is uh, diabetic patients, mm -hmm. right? Talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Well, we see diabetics on a regular basis, and most of the time, unfortunately, it's the diabetics that are not very well controlled and are not taking care of themselves. And so it's very important to have someone monitoring very closely. With diabetes, uh, with elevated blood sugars over prolonged periods of time, we see that the nerves for multiple different functions in the foot uh, stop working as well as they should. And so patients can develop neuropathy where they don't feel things as well. Uh, there was a, a famous doctor who, who called it the gift of pain. Unfortunately, diabetics don't have the gift of pain. If I were to have something in my shoe or if you were, if we stepped on something, we'd feel it and we'd take steps to alleviate the situation. Diabetics often don't, and so they can develop small wounds on the bottom of the foot that just get worse and worse. Uh, in addition to not feeling things properly, the sensation to the muscles out to the toes becomes damaged, and so patients can develop digital deformities, which can cause increases in pressure throughout the foot. They also can develop neuropathy with the cells that keep the foot hydrated, and so diabetics oftentimes will get very dry skin that can crack and cause problems. In addition to that, we know that with diabetics, when their blood sugars are, are elevated over certain numbers for prolonged periods of time, they tend to have a very difficult time healing wounds as well as, as fighting off infections. And so we see that in certain unfortunate patients, it's a, a cascade of multiple small problems leading up to major issues. So is, is it fairly common for uh, diabetic patients to see their podiatrist on a regular basis for all the reasons that you talked about? Absolutely. I would say that patients who are well controlled, their blood sugars are where they should be. They've got good sensation. They're not having any major issues. They should probably be seen about every six months or every year just to make sure that nothing pops up. Uh, the, the diabetic patients that come in with uh, limited blood flow and limited sensation and calluses or blisters, those are the ones that need to be seen on a, a very regular basis. You know, I've, I've heard of diabetic foot ulcers. I know what a stomach ulcer is, but mm -hmm. what is a diabetic foot ulcer? 
Well, uh, again, we talked about the cascade of things going wrong, the patient's not having good sensation, their skin not being hydrated, they're having, uh, having digital deformities in areas of increased pressure. Again, if I had a problem or if you had a problem uh, and we developed a blister or a callus, we'd feel it and we'd take steps to alleviate the problem. But diabetics don't necessarily feel it. And with the increased pressure that's constantly put in specific areas, the tissue becomes damaged and eventually starts to break down. And at that point, the diabetics have lost their primary defense against infection, their, their, the skin. And bacteria can get into the deeper tissues. And we can develop a couple of different things. One, they can develop infections. And oftentimes, that responds pretty decently to oral antibiotics. But if it doesn't, they can be admitted for IV antibiotics. If the wound continues to get deeper and deeper into some of the more vital structures, then unfortunately, uh, a, a foot and ankle surgeon has a role of surgically debriding and sometimes amputating uh, parts of the foot. Because uh, these type of foot ulcers, they can become <clears throat> life-threatening if something's not done, right? Exactly, exactly. Again, a, a low-grade infection with a little bit of cellulitis can be treated with oral antibiotics or a trip to the hospital, but sometimes these wounds get deeper down into joints, into the tendons, into the bones, and they can get, they can get much worse very quickly. Well, let's talk a little bit more about surgery because that is a large role that you play as a uh, podiatric foot and ankle surgeon. You're in the operating room helping patients not only with diabetic foot ulcers, but other conditions as well. Can you talk some more about that? Sure, absolutely. Again, like we talked about before, one of the more common reasons that uh, we see patients is for pain associated with a bunion. And it's not simply just shaving off a bump in most cases. It's actually having to figure out what the problem is, why it formed, and making slight adjustments to the bones, to the joints, to the tendons. Same thing with hammer toes. We also have patients that have painful soft tissue masses throughout the foot. They can have painful neuromas that sometimes respond well to injections, but sometimes need to be excised. Uh, we can have joint pain. And uh, in those instances, we do what's called arthroscopy, where we stick a camera inside a joint to evaluate it uh, and stick another instrument in to essentially be our fingers inside to clean up any, any pathology uh, and try to improve the patient's symptoms. That is a nice procedure in that we make two small incisions about a centimeter, centimeter and a half long rather than a big, large incision. Patients tend to respond better to that. Their, their healing process tends to be less involved that way. And I would assume that surgery on the feet can be very complex because uh, the feet have a, a lot of bones in them, right? They do. They have a large number of bones, some of them very large, some of them very small. And it, it's not simply going in there and cutting things. It's understanding the relationship, the, the biomechanics of the foot, which joint is supposed to be moving when, which tendon is supposed to be firing when. And so when you see a pathological condition, a, a high arched foot or a low arched foot or um, a bunion or a hammer toe, you can understand what's causing it and you can go in there and, and fix it. Well, we're just about out of time. Can you give us uh, just some last uh, words of advice to keep our feet healthy? Best piece of advice I can give you is to just keep a close eye on your feet, um, especially in the diabetic population. If there are problems, it's usually easier to treat things sooner rather than later. Uh, if you're not a diabetic but you do have aches and pains, again, keep a close eye on your feet. Uh, from my experience, it's easier to treat pain in a foot that's been there for a couple of days or weeks as opposed to a couple of months or years. So rather than delaying things, come in and see us and we'll hopefully help you out. Comfortable shoes are always good advice. Uh, not going barefoot, I know, especially when the weather starts to warm up, people like to go barefoot, but uh, that can usually cause a lot of different problems. So comfortable shoes, keep a close eye on your feet, and if there's any questions or concerns, you let us know. All right. Well, uh, thanks to our guest today, Dr. Jeremy Fleischman, a podiatric foot and ankle surgeon from Mayo Clinic Health System. It's been a great conversation. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And to make an appointment with Dr. Fleischman in Fairmont, you can call 507-238-8501. Thank you for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Have a great day and be healthy.